Okay. Uh. Okay, what can I say? Okay. Okay? Yeah. Greetings, everyone. Greetings, and welcome to Progressive Discussions. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. And uh, I am here with my uh, co host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censor 1977, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this uh, November to remember, sir? A little breathless. Yes. A little breathless. My, my, favorite, <clears throat> my favorite time of year just passed. And I hope everyone had a pleasant um, All Hallows' Eve, all, all Souls' Day, and to all Mexicans and Mexican Americans, the Day of the Dead, November 2nd. I hope everyone had a, a good, safe, pleasant time. Uh, mine was not rip roaring, but it was good. It was good. I did a, a show with uh, Mr. J. Uh, Tirio of uh, um, um, the New Orleans region of Louisiana, and it's on YouTube. I did a uh, All Hallows' Eve, uh, you know, a special, mm -hmm. wearing my wizard hat and uh, having the right decor in the background. Oh. So I, I do enjoy, um, I did enjoy very much doing the show, and so I want to say greetings to Mr. J. Atirio um, of Southern Louisiana for doing the show with me and also to my near dear friend uh, Natalia Rodriguez uh, of San Diego, California. Greetings. Um, yes, it is, um, <clears throat> what the hell is it, November 3rd? No. Fourth? What is it? What is it? One, two, three, four. Four. I'm telling you, every time I do the show, I get distracted. Uh. I get distracted. And now, we have to prematurely take uh, our break. Uh, maybe go 25 minutes instead of 29 minutes and 53 seconds. Yeah, about three minutes. Yeah, how much up. bullshitting did I do? By about time? three minutes used up. So, you know, let's the roll round it three, off. Uh, 20, 25, 28, 20, well, 26. Well, well, 20, I don't want to push it up. 26. I don't want to push my luck too, too 26. Much. Okay, seven Good. lucky bells for this week's progressive discussions. And God only knows we need the luck. I don't know, I don't like the sounds of that six bell. You know what? Fuck it, I'm doing it again. Seven more lucky bells. You know why? Because my <clears throat> antioxidant rich tea, that's right, no craft beer this, this week because I forgot to buy it. Thanks to distractions from uh, <clears throat> the smaller minded people in my life that don't that are not deep like myself and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman that distracted me at home to make me forget to get craft beer. But it's, it's, it's supposed to be 58 degrees Fahrenheit here in northeastern New Jersey. So, you know, it was the tea was kind of jiggling around while I was hitting the bell. Uh -huh. So let me take a sip of this. That is quite pleasant. It is antioxidant rich and very medicinal. Um, let me put the tea here where it, where it won't get, no accidents will happen. Because we already had one accident. <laughs> I accidentally hit my blackthorn shillelagh to knock the, the, the tea cup off the desk and went on the floor. Among other things, like uh, someone at home causing me to forget my notebook. So I have to kind of really ad-lib the monologue. I'm telling you, Beelzebub is at work. Everything we discussed politically is part of our series, <laughs> Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. 
There's the conch. Soaking that conch energy from Davy Jones's locker. Yes, King King Neptune. Mm. Davy Jones's locker is needs to be uh, expanded, extended, remodeled. It is way too small for the amount of people that deserve to be in Davy Jones's locker. Yeah, what are you gonna do? I think we need a friggin' uh, a, a warehouse instead of Davy Jones's locker. Should be a warehouse with the amount of people that should be there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll mention it. You know, it's uh, all right. Here <clears throat> we have our official uh -huh. end of days prophecy um, skeleton, okay, which represents where the planet Earth and mankind is going if people continue to elect right wing politicians. See this? There you go. End time prophecy skeleton. Welcome. His name is Billy Bones. Yeah. Captain Billy Bones. Captain. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, then I gotta get the bosun's whistle back. Holy shit. Yeah, Captain Billy Bones. You know, like Johnny Depp and the Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Captain Black. Yeah, that was, they did a whole bunch of those movies. Yes, they did. But he's an extremely talented actor, Johnny Depp, and he, and he doesn't want any part of the perverted, crazy Hollywood life. He lives in, in France with his wife. Ah. You know, uh, th there are certain actors that um, have, a clean, ha have had a clean reputation and decided not to be part of that perverted, uh, holly weird uh, world, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, well, now they... Now they got Spacey. Oh, the pedophile ring? Well, uh, you well, know. Well, the kingpin is. Uh, he admitted to. What trying. is it? Epstein? Epstein? What the hell is his oh, name? The, oh, the Weinstein. Kingpin. Oh, Weinstein. Yeah, he's he's approached about over 50 women. Well. his casting couch. It's you know? not the. It, look, look, the casting couch is nothing new. No. It's not the casting couch that bothers me because usually. The person who is asked to lie on the casting couch is an adult who can make their own decisions. What bothers me is a pedophile, um, uh, 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 human trafficking uh, involving pedophiles, uh, rich, very wealthy pedophiles. That's disturbing. That's, that's part of the underground satanic cult that the elitists uh, tend to belong to, you know, um, so on and so forth. Uh, if you're up on your uh, uh, documentaries, you will mm -hmm. learn all about it. But then again, it shouldn't surprise you, Reverend Bill, yeah. because hey. we're, we're in the end times. Yeah, but you don't have to be in the end times because we've been in these, that stuff for a long time. Wherever you got differences in power, Cults. I'm talking about cults. The existence Power. of cults. Well, what did McCall used to be uh, in the world, worldly, the flesh? What the hell you know? was his name? I forget his name. You know when back I back in the forties, for crying out loud. Who? He was a devil uh, worshiper. Oh, that guy. Yeah. That. Um, yeah. Uh, I, he was had a shaved head. Yeah, and he had a black cape with a yeah, kind of a yeah. kind of a Bela Lugosi uh, collar sticking yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, him. Yeah. He started the and first. He would, he would he would bend over and shit, you know, <laughs> here and there. <laughs> that was one of his trademarks. Well, he wanted to offend. Exactly. Like the uh, oh, who's that uh, so so called quote unquote. Artist in New York City, uh, what was his uh, name? Megalthorpe, the one that that, that put a, a crucifix in in a jar of urine. Maple. Maplethorpe would try to try to get a shot some a shock effect. Yeah. And now. Um, I um, think he's dead though. Oh, and then um, I mean, there's um, maybe wrong, but you know. Uh, Kate Perry, who says that human <laughs> flesh is the best tasting meat. Oh, and, and uh, Miley Cyrus, who says Satan. 
is actually a nice guy. She probably wants to get banged by Satan. He was once a nice guy. No, she didn't say once. She said <laughs> is. is. Oh, well. They should move in together. Katy Perry and, uh, and uh, uh, Miley Cyrus. Oh, incidentally, Kate Perry's father is, is, what is or was, or, or still is, uh, a, um, a zealot evangelical minister. Uh. And, and, and Miley Cyrus, uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, is supposedly one of those evangelical born-again dudes. So that stuff is just a rebellion against the well, growing up. Well, Katy Perry's father forbid any of uh, uh, both Kate Perry and her siblings uh, for, to celebrate Halloween. He forbid yeah, them right. to take part in Halloween in any way, shape, or form. So it, what I'm trying to say is it's right-wing fanaticism. Well, any fanaticism. There could be left-wing fanaticism. I'm like, sure uh, the same thing happened with Paul Ryan and his father. Listen, uh, there can, there's all forms of fanaticism. Left-wing fanaticism are the uh, militant vegans that, that tell you that you should not consume, not even dairy products, <laughs> or wear leather. You know, I mean, you got them. Um, um, Oh, uh, by the way, I have very, something very important to say because, uh, involving the very next holiday. Which is? I need, which is um, supposedly Thanksgiving. Not for the Native Americans, by the way. Um, what about Veterans Day? Yeah, what about doing something positive for veterans instead of just saying, yippee, it's Veterans Day, you know? I mean, actually, do something to help veterans, you know? Yeah, you know Money! Um, I, there's this Don't just pray for veterans. There's this program called the American Pickers on cable. I hate them, and, but I uh, have my own reasons. They were visiting a guy who was English. Yes. And he would import all kinds of invalid chairs. Yeah. Because in England, after World War II yeah. and World War One, etc., they made these invalid chairs for their veterans who lost legs. They were like motor scooters with three wheels, but like a chair. Okay. But they were a motorette. Uh-huh. And, you know, you, they could uh, get around. The veterans could get around. Now what the hell do they have to do over here to get a friggin' leg or an arm? They have to jump through rings of fire. Exactly. Well, Bernie Sanders uh, um, on Twitter, um, you you say you said Trump's account was closed, but Bernie Sanders had said probably prior to that, you know, uh, hey, President Trump. Do your job. You're just uh, you're just trying to distract Americans away from uh, your connection with the Russians by giving a billionaires more tax breaks and taking millions of Americans off of health care, etc., etc., as a distraction to what's going on with you. You know uh, how you you were able to win. Uh, over Hillary Clinton uh, by having uh, less votes. So uh, Trump said, uh, read uh, Donna Brazile's new, new book, book yes. about co the collusion of how Hillary Clinton uh, bought the DNC and stole the Democratic primary from you, cra crazy <laughs> Bernie. Bernie. No, yeah. she, he said crooked Hillary. Okay. He used the words crooked, how crooked, crooked Hillary, Hillary yeah. uh, bought the DNC and stole the Democratic primary from you, crazy, crazy Bernie. Bernie. <laughs> and that was his answer. Yeah. But the truth is, it, it is a big, it is a, an attempt to distract Americans away from the well, whole Russia. Well, it ain't a tax cut for the middle class, I'll tell you that right now. Hey, he, they, and it never is when the Republicans do it. Well, when they run, they promise to help the middle class, don't they? Of course. you got uh, right here in New Jersey now, we have Phil Murphy against Kim Guadagna.
Well, Phil Murphy. Now, Quim the guy, Kim the, 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 the you know, God, is God, God, is a thin female Chris Christie, basically. Is yapping about the fact that she wants to give us a break in our property taxes. Well, I got news for her. We used to have one. Didn't, didn't, didn't. Disabled people, elderly, used to get $900 a year from the, the homestead rebate I until Christie got rid of it. Hey, didn't didn't Chris didn't Republican Christine uh, Todd Whitless, I mean Whitman, promise to lower property taxes, and that really did not well, happen. She, she, Christie got rid of as many social services as he as possibly he could. could. Yes. You know, I mean, uh, he passed a law where if you if you're a low income person and you, and you only pay room and board, mm -hmm. you don't pay for utilities, then you don't deserve food stamps and of course he defunded Planned Parenthood uh, and uh, well, women's, also women's um, uh, health uh, thing he did. Yeah welfare is a joke anyway $140 yeah. a month uh, cash assistance in New Jersey that, that's 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 less than chump change that's right. not that doesn't even qualify as chump change uh, and the list goes on and on and on what the hell does paying utilities have to do with your need for food, for what sustenance? You, yeah, what if you're a single bar, a man and you're in a boarding house? You, you can still be and low. And you're not paying utilities. Well, naturally you're low income. If you're living in a damn boarding house, you're yeah. not paying utilities. <laughs> but they don't care. They want the poor to either drop dead or become a slave to a corporation. If you're homeless, they want to throw you into a private a corporate privatized prison Ooh, yeah. for vagrancy and have you work as free slave labor right incidentally <coughs> do listen to me it, it it is no it is the beginning of november 2017 do not shop on thanksgiving day or and during Black Friday, Black Friday weekend, <laughs> listen carefully, you are just feeding into right-wing corporate American greed in the sleazy corporate American retail industry by shopping on those days because uh, you are only uh, enabling them to continue to force their employees to work on Thanksgiving Day mm -hmm. and Black Friday weekend. Not just Black Friday, because it's not just Black Friday, it's the whole weekend. Mm. Black Friday weekend. Do not work on those days. Um, I want to say, I want to bring up the subject of, um, um, I want to call out and bash airport security. You remember the movie, um, it was kind of, it was pretty funny. It was called Paul Blart uh, Mall Cop, as in shopping mall. And, you know, mall cops are like, the reason why they say mall cop is because they're like wannabe state troopers, you know. They yeah. walk around, they strut around like they're real macho. And, and they're only secure, they're not even, they're only security officers that work in a mall. And they try to act big shot, like big shots, you know. You know, and uh, security, <clears throat> these security people... They they abuse their authority, some of them, mm -hmm. because of ego. And uh, in the case of airport security, um, they are wannabe FBI agents that will never be. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, what happened was, when when I was in San Diego Airport, getting ready to fly back to uh, Newark Liberty Airport, New Jersey. I had this this affirmative action hiree, or this black guy, that was talking down to me for no reason at all, talking to me like I was a little child misbehaving. Believe me, the only reason why I bit my tongue real hard is because I did not want to miss my flight. <laughs> because if I would have had a confrontation with him, I would have missed my flight. Now, on the same token, when uh, when uh, my uh, girlfriend Natalia flew back to San Diego from Newark Liberty Airport, 
she wasn't walking fast enough so this airport security uh, black female uh, called her a bitch ah yeah I could report that I don't know where and how but I, it can be reported I didn't know I was furious that's why I'm saying you know incompetent affirmative action hiree of FBI agent wannabes that are incompetent fucking security officers you know what I mean you don't have to abuse your power there's no reason to to call somebody a bitch for any reason you you behave professionally you do your job and that's it okay um and this is what we have I mean if you if you if you did your job that well then those young men would not have gotten on that plane with box cutters to prove a point you know the young men that were arrested right after 9-11 they wanted to prove how incompetent airport security is and they and they got away with it you know uh, do your job don't abuse your power there's no reason to call somebody a name uh, and there's no reason to talk down to me because listen I wanted I didn't want to miss my flight but I would I would have knocked that guy out cold. Ooh. Believe me, I would have. You know, we don't us Sicilian uh, uh, Caucasian guys. We're not. Um, we don't necessarily practice um, um, uh, political correctness. We'll fucking break both your legs and and your and your skull. <clears throat> so, but I don't want to miss my flight. So, oh. Uh, Huckabee, I just remembered another great topic. Huckabee Sanders, you are wrong, Huckabee, you are wrong. Not everyone is trying to come to the United States of America. She made a, a statement this past uh, week about, um, um, I don't know if it was a, a statement based on immigration or based on what happened in New York. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was based on what happened in New York. Okay. Uh, which we, we will have a moment of silence for the six victims, I think. Eight. Eight victims. Eight dead. Uh, uh, eight dead. Uh, Fifty some hearts. Yeah, or so she made a statement. She was talking about the, um, the uh, 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 Homeland Security uh, um, uh, approach, how, how, what they should do about this uh, increase in terrorism, which happens to be targeting the larger major New York I mean the the major cities in the United States are target mm -hmm. and of course New York City Manhattan is is one of the largest targets and she says oh yeah, yeah everyone wants to come to the United States hey Huckabee not northern Europe and Scandinavia that's for sure mm -hmm. they have no logical reason to want to come here and uh, so you're wrong. You're completely wrong. And unfortunately, uh, I believe it was six, six of the dead were came from Argentina. Yeah, most of them were tourists, and that's what I feel bad about because they're visiting New York, and they were near the uh, World Trade Center, the new World Trade Center. Yeah. Now that's going to hurt tourism, without a doubt. Uh, people are going to think twice than to decide to come to New York City, especially that area. Um, and he lived in Patterson, like the 9-11 uh, perpetrators mm. lived in this Middle Eastern community in Patterson, which is uh, a, a part of Main Avenue. And um, yeah, people, I think, you know, I don't blame tourists for, for thinking twice about that. Um, so, you know, we'll have a brief moment of silence for these victims, and um, I think that, um, I think that New York City uh, is, is the only exception to the rule about, about electing a Republican. I think that Republicans are much tougher, Republic, you need someone tough on crime. <coughs> And, uh, and and high on security, uh, like a, you need a Republican mayor of New York because uh, Mayor uh, Bill de Blasio reminds me of uh, David Dinkins, you know, when you had all the aggressive panhandlers bothering everybody and you had uh, more crime and all the sleaze 
was all over the place, you know, Times Square, 42nd Street, and you had you had more crime uh, in the subways, you know, and 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 then uh, Rudy Giuliani and his police commissioners clean house. I don't think I think New York has to be run with an iron hand. Yeah. I don't think uh, liberalism is the answer to running New York City or Chicago. Oh, forget it, Chicago. They should send in the National Guard and, and the U.S. Marshals and the troops, you know, but you can't, some some cities you cannot have a, a, a um, uh, what's the word, a, 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 um, a pandering, uh, bleeding heart, a liberal mayor. It just doesn't work. So, moment of silence for the uh, eight victims in New York. Um, actually, eight victims deserves eight bells. Let's do that again. Okay, um, got a few minutes. Couple minutes at least. Mm. Don't ask me why. Ask the Sony Corporation why our video segments are broken down <coughs> into 29 minutes and 53 seconds. I haven't the foggiest idea why. So, um, anyway, I'm going to take a, take a short pause. And then we will begin with our first reading for this week's show, Progressive Discussions. I think the YouTube Google company has been censoring our shows. I know it. I do. I study the uh, activity of our shows. And I think you corporate scumbags at Google are censoring us just like people are uh, progressive warriors are getting censored on Facebook okay and 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 we all know why they say Bella Bella Lugosi could never see a reflection let me, let me see my reflection I haven't well you're not a vampire well let me see myself well, hold on hold on, hold on man hold on man you know hold on man okay I guess uh, that's pretty much uh, okay. I hope. <laughs> All right, we're back. Um, we were just discussing how things are forced upon you. Um, in general, whether it be uh, the child uh, safety feature where we're all for all of the doors of your car lock as soon as you go into drive, um, uh, Windows 10 forcing things on you uh, that you, uh, you never choose, voluntarily choose. Now other on online companies are pushing their software on people. Uh, uh, retail, online retail companies that want you to enroll in the automatic uh, renewal program where they they charge your your debit card every month for for a, a new supply delivery yeah. auto automatically delivery. without without you manually doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words. Uh, Capitalism is getting uh, more pushy and obnoxious by the year, where they're 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 intrusively pushing things on you. Um, it's not good. I I like to voluntarily and manually decide what I want. I don't want an automatic uh, energy shut off feature you know, where the device shuts off automatically. I don't want 
a, a, a trickle down, uh, trickle dickle down water saving shower head. I don't want, I want to be able to choose things. Yeah. You know, to my liking. It's like uh, a lot of people don't like to drive a, uh, an automatic transmission. They like the manual. Well, make it available. Oh, well, geez, it ain't today. But it's not. But it's not. Yeah. I mean, if you if you really, I, I mean, personally, all the extra work that you have to do when you're in traffic, especially on a hill, with a manual transmission, you're not really saving that much gasoline to go through all that trouble. But some people like the feel. Mm -hmm. Of a stick shift. Being in control. Make it available to them. Hey, if you don't have children, don't put the the child safety feature in the car where all the doors have lock on you. Mm -hmm. Automatically, you know. Mm. If a kid is that stupid to open the door of a moving car, it's just like, like crossing guards. It's your ring. Yeah, I know. Hold on. It's just like crossing guards. Excuse me. I have no... That's how you lost it the last I haven't time. the foggiest freaking idea how that got there. Unless I didn't put it on to begin with. My medieval or copper huh. ring. Medieval style. Maybe I didn't have it to begin with. Maybe, since it was sitting here, maybe the shillelagh knocked it and it flew over there. Or skeletal guard. Yeah, like the commercial. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, what was I saying? I don't yeah, know. don't force things on people. That's all. Yeah. If they don't need it. I don't remember if I had my medieval copper ring on at the beginning of the show. So well, many must have because it was new on the floor. So many things have happened. Yeah. You remember all the shit that happened during the uh, huh. All Hallows Eve special show? Ooh. Was that, that was last week, right? Yeah. Anyway, let us begin <coughs> with the first reading of our show. We are coming to you from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And remember, if you do not vote, you have no right to complain. That's my motto. That solves a lot of problems. Uh, in the United States. Uh, Chris Christie's wife has been ticketed. Oh, really? In a statewide distracted driving crackdown. Uh-oh, was she texting? That was ordered by her husband's attorney general. But, but she got caught. New Jersey Advanced Media reports Mary Pat Grizzly yeah. was stopped while driving with a cell phone in her hand. Uh-oh. In her hand. So uh, I guess, well, the law doesn't apply to uh, uh, rich Republicans, I guess. On April 10th, in Bernardsville, by a police officer assigned to the grant-funded program that targeted texting, and other distracted driving. You know, that's a big ticket in New York State. Yeah? Yeah, over $800. $800. Whoa! Someone, someone on my Facebook uh, friends list posted it. Uh, you know, a close-up close uh, photograph. Of the ticket. Oh, the ticket. They're, they're not messing around. Well, uh, I think around here it's 250 Yeah, well, New York, um, well, New York State has lots of very well, nice lots stuff. of ways of grabbing money from you no no they have lots of uh, they have lots of social programs under Andrew Cuomo that New Jersey does not have also insurance companies have to cover people whereas in New Jersey they could they could fuck with you she did not identify herself as Republican governor Chris Christie's wife but she did tell the officer she was not making a call. The officer told her she could not have the phone in her hand while driving. 
Well, that that's the law. She should have known that, being that she was the governor's wife. The officer told her she was getting a ticket because he was on the distracting driving grant detail. The first lady pleaded guilty to driving with a cell phone and paid the $250 fine. Well, I want to salute that police officer for doing his job and not sucking up to the woman because she just happened to be Governor Chris Christie's wife. <laughs> so I salute him for doing his job. The law is the law. No one is above the law. So good work, officer. Except Donald Trump. Unless you're Donald Trump. Right. Unless you're Donald Trump, that will, uh, <clears throat> if you accuse him of something he is doing that is bad, he will distract you by uh, bringing up, uh, uh, mentioning the words Crooked Hillary and Crazy Bernie. Yeah. Yeah, and the DNC. He will, yes, he will do that. They sting. Hmm. What? They damage crops and wildlife. And they are extending their range in the United States. That? Imported fire ants. Oh, I had a personal experience with them years ago. I, I, I was standing on a fire ant mound in South, uh, in South Florida, in Fort in the Fort Lauderdale area, and I didn't know it until I felt my leg burning to yeah. high heavens <laughs> or to hell. Yeah. Yes. They were crawling up, man. Oh, they don't mess around, man. And, but they're not indigenous to the southern United States. I think they are an invasive tropical species. Well, they are unwelcome guests here. Well, and careless plant shipping helps them spread. A colony was discovered this spring in palm trees sent from Florida to Delaware. The hell are they doing in palm trees? They should be in, a, in the in the ground in the colony. They don't colonize trees unless there's something to eat up there. Two fire ant species were introduced a century or so ago into Mobile, Alabama. You mean initially? See, I was right. Invasive. Hidden in soil ballast on cargo ships from South America. There you go, and right again. The U.S. Department of Agriculture said, since then, they've infested 14 mostly southern states and Puerto Rico. Hey, those Burmese pythons in South Florida are invasive. <laughs> you know, it happens. Uh, didn't the Japanese send the Japanese beetle uh, to the United States to destroy our crops? Well, they're doing a good job, too. They they had other uh, sneaky plans. The uh, uh, Japanese, uh, uh, through espionage, of sneaking things <coughs> here. Actually, they had, uh, they had, um, what the hell was it? They, um, some kind of, they, they were, they had the, they had some kind of a biological, uh, um, man-made, uh, like a bubonic plague that they wanted uh -huh. to, they wanted to uh, uh, drop on uh, California coastal cities. Ooh. They were they wanted to drop the plague or some biological weapon during World War II. Uh, there's a lot of things that Americans did not hear about in their history book, or, you know, read about in their history books, or, or through the media. I mean, the media doesn't say shit where they have had a huge and detrimental impact on agriculture and natural resources. They continue their advance with the USDA predicting they eventually could reach from the Pacific Northwest to parts of the Mid-Atlantic. Well over five billion is spent every year on medical treatment, prevention, and control in fire ant ridden areas the agency says yeah, agricultural damage alone 
is estimated to cost more than $750 million annually, primarily for equipment and crop damage and livestock losses. Well, ants are venomous, like, uh, like uh, hornets and wasps, which I, th I believe are in the same family. <laughs> oh, well, these, these are the, you know, oh, they, well, they yeah, do they, bite, they bite. No, there are ants that have stronger venom than, than other ants. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, uh, horn to horny, horny toes, horn lizards. Horny toes. They, uh, yeah. that is their f food of choice. Oh, good. Is the very venomous harvester ant. Good. They love ants. This is what they eat. In the wild, this is what they eat, and supposedly they, they, it's good for their health if you have one in captivity. Um, well, we need a couple of ant eaters. No, they, no, they, well, them. well, well, I mean. Um, the horn lizards uh, um, are a um, easier, more efficient way to to do it, right? Because uh, it is the food of choice. So I mean, there there must be different species of them that you could you know introduce um, out of necessity. They're kind of cute looking. They have a round, chubby face, a round body, spines. You know, I mean. They're not. They're not bad to have around. I think the praying mantis was introduced to the United States for uh, by the agricultural industry. As an urban pest, imported fire ants are a nuisance pest and can cause allergic reactions, including rare instances of anaphylactic shock. In humor. Well, this can happen uh, to any allergy to, uh, to to a venom. It happens to uh, people that are allergic to bee stings, so on and so forth. And anything venomous can cause that if you happen to be allergic. Fire ants are particularly hazardous when encountered at nursing homes, daycare centers, schools, and playgrounds. A federal quarantine requires that state inspection certifies certificate, excuse me, be displayed showing that flora and potting soil from the invaded areas are fire and free before they are sold. Imported fire ants hitch rides in sod, hay bales, and nursery stock. Mated queens fly into new areas. Rafts of flooded colonies like those displaced recently by Hurricane Harvey in Texas also claim fresh terrain. Hmm. The two fire ant species, black and red, are similar, said Blake Layton, an extension entomologist with Mississippi, Mississippi State University. Controls are the same. Stings feel the same. Yeah, they he make said. you go ouch, or <laughs> scream, or worse. Fire ants are venomous. No kidding. Their stings typically cause a burning sensation and fluid-filled blisters lasting several weeks. Ah, uh, mine didn't last uh, more than an hour, but uh, but you you I imagine the allergic would have a hard time of it over a course of time. You know, you know. Um, fire ants also destroy a wide variety of wildlife, especially ground dwelling birds. Oh, well, nothing nothing stands in, in the way of a of a. A rampaging uh, colony of ants. Yeah. Fire ants can be controlled but not eliminated by using granular baits and broadcast insecticides. I don't know how true this is, but I read an article where if you uh, if you see fire ants to throw dry uh, hominy grits on the mound because when they they ingest it and then drink water, the grit uh, the corn grit swells up and and um, and and kills them. 
I don't know how true this is, but it's worth a try. <clears throat> uh, how many grits are very inexpensive? Poisonous baits are pretty <clears throat> efficient. Ants carry them back to their mound and kill the queen. Well, that's, that's what we use every spring for those tiny little uh, black ants. Mm -hmm. And if it, it, sugar it works, it works, but ah. we had so much rain this year that the, uh, the ant season was extended greatly. But it has to be a long-term effort. Yeah. Prevention is the most common deterrent. Do not buy anything that has been inspected, has not been inspected. The real risk is having somebody come down here on a trip, taking potted plants home. Those plants have not been inspected. Climate limits the ants' range. They do not like dryness and low temperatures said Mike Merchant, an extension entomologist with Texas A&M University. Well, any burrowing um, 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 invertebrate, insect, uh, uh, n normally lives in very moist burrows when they tunnel. All of them do. Even desert uh, invertebrates and insects and such. Uh, and, and reptiles live in very moist burrows. So when a person, when a person who thinks they know it all, on a on a forum online says that oh, the desert creatures get all the moisture they need from their prey, from their food source. <clears throat> no, no, no. During the heat of day, they live in deep, very moist burrows. They need access to soil moisture. And they cannot survive prolonged temperatures in the teens or below that reach deep into their underground burrows. Mm -hmm. So freezing them sounds good to me. You ever see that freeze thing that they use for bed what, bugs? What is that? Got like a liquid nitrogen, like a dry yeah, ice? Yeah, yeah. And they spray it on your. That's how the doctor removed this uh, mole-like. Uh, growth on my uh, on my face he used cryogenics the, yeah he used the cryogenics it was a form of liquid uh, nitrogen yeah. dry ice of, you know so yeah. what, what happens is it, it causes frostbite to the to the object you it want to destroy off. and it falls off right widespread management is necessary to stop them from moving into new territory Well, you know, <clears throat> um, pest control is an ongoing thing. You know, it's like when the, we used to have the Cold War with the Soviet Union, or, or or fighting crime, or fighting terrorism, or fighting. You know, I mean, they get they get one up on you, and then you get one up on them, and it goes back and forth and back and forth. Uh, medical science, like uh, antibi antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria and viruses. Build up an immunity, then you got to find something stronger or better to kill them. Yeah. And then they develop an immunity and come back. And you know, uh, there are some things in life that uh, are ongoing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, be, uh, well, the beginning and no end. Yeah, like stupid well, Americans. Like that, maybe Afghanistan. Like stupid Americans. Yeah, the poppy fields. Protect those poppy fields in Afghanistan. Like stupid Americans who keep on re-electing Republicans to, to, to cut their nose off to spite their faces, you know? Got to. Yeah. Uh, Trump. Here we go. Is being pulled in different directions as he heads to Asia on a grueling 12-day trip. Grueling? Yeah, but isn't he eat, living high on the hog in Air Force One? Yeah, he was down at... How uh, grueling could it be? Uh, where the hell is he? He's down at one of his... Um, they have the best chefs on that plane, I hear. Yeah, they do. He's, he's down at one of his golf clubs or something. 
get, and he was getting ready to take Maya off. Lar Maya Largo, whatever. I don't know which one it was, but he was getting ready to take off. Oh, real groom. He went down there to say say hello to. Uh, no, I think it was something new that he 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 had down there. He went down there to say hello, and then he was going to be taken off on the on the airplane. You know what's grueling? The millions of Americans and children that. Uh, they're going to be screwed with the taxes. That, that have not, that do not have adequate health care. And the middle class that are going to be even further screwed, worse than before, by taxation, by the burden of taxation. Because remember, the true backbone of the United States economy mm -hmm. and the true consumer has always been the middle class. The president's loyal supporters are eager to hear him take a hard line on the Chinese trade and economic practices he railed against as a candidate. Of course, that's a priority, China. Of course, they make everything cheap. But many in his administration are pushing Trump to sweep those concerns aside as he works to pressure the Chinese uh, Xi Jinping to tighten the screws on North Korea. Yeah, and um, give Tibet their freedom, by the way, mainland China. At the same time, much of the president's attention has been occupied by urgent matters at home, including indictments. Oh, yeah. Against two top campaign aides, the deepening Russian investigation, and a high-stakes fight over his tax plan. By the admission of his own chief of staff, Trump has been distracted, as also demonstrated by the flurry of tweets he unleashed Friday before departing Washington and continued from aboard Air Force One. Fourteen tweets over six hours. I'm sure that he he was redundant in a lot of the things he said. The president dug deep into intrigue surrounding Hillary Clinton and the two 2016 presidential race. You know, that's the distraction. And, <laughs> and other issues with just one tweet oh, devoted God. to his trip. If you, if you mention Putin and Russia uh, helping him get elected, he mentions Crooked Hillary <laughs> and the DNC, the collusion and Barbara Bobo Brazil's book. The collusion, the collusion. Even before the latest news, concerns abounded over how the president, a homebody who dislikes long stretches on the road, would fare during a marathon trip that will take him to five countries in 12 days. Well, he's not a homebody, he's an office body because I hear he used to work long hours and uh, he, well, that was his excuse probably not to go home to his wife. <laughs> he used to be in the office in, in Manhattan all the time, I heard, from what I heard. You know. There were always questions as to what the end of the trip would look like. Would he become distracted? <laughs> Said Maria Solis, a senior fellow at the Brookings Center for East Asia Policy Studies. Okay. Now I think the question has shifted. Is he going to be distracted from the get-go? Are the domestic political problems going to be first and foremost on his mind? The administration projected confidence as it scrambled to lock down Trump's itinerary, describing the president as well-versed in the region and familiar with its leaders. National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster told reporters Thursday that Trump had placed 43 calls to Indo-Pacific leaders as president and met with the heads of Japan and South Korea, China, and Vietnam. Vietnam. Trump has also worked to develop close personal relationships with Jai and Shinsu, 
aid of Japan. Ties he hopes will pay off dividends. Oh, that's why. Pay off, pay off, money, profit. You know, uh, I'll, uh, uh, before we go to lunch, I want to bring up uh, the holiday season. The, uh, you know, of course, uh, pagan Christmas is coming. You know, the winter solstice, Yule, and my favorite day, Krampus Day. I want to bash the United States uh, Postal Service. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, U U.S. Um, yeah, United States Postal Service. Uh, they, I, 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 I ship something uh, recently. Uh, Two-day priority shipping. I yeah. paid extra money for it, and guess what? It reached its destination shattered and I told them to put a big fragile sticker on it on the parcel didn't do any good I they asked me if it was any liquid inside they go no anything fragile inside I said absolutely make sure you put a big fragile sticker on it well guess what me paying for two-day priority shipping was a waste because both items were shattered thank you very much privatize United States um, uh, postal service. That's what they're calling themselves now, right? United States Postal Service. Oh yeah, if, it's, if it is the United States Postal Service. Well, they. I, I hear uh, um, some of it or a lot of it is privatized, which which means which probably accounts for the the high cost of of my shipping fee and the fact that they did not handle it. With tender loving care. This is uh, the uh, it, it it came out of the Little Ferry, New Jersey, post office. So you know, I'm, you're in the Chisler's Hall of Shame, and uh, also Costco is in the Chisler's Hall of Shame because Natalia, who was a member, uh, did not uh, chose choose to cancel something in the, in the print department. They say, oh, uh, it's too late. She says, yeah, but I didn't pay. Oh, it's too late. The order's got to go through. What do you mean it's got to go through? It only goes through when you pay. Uh -huh. Oh, it's, it's a big joke. It, it's, anyway, it's, it's right-wing corporatism is what it is. We're going to go to lunch, and uh, you will see. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. 
We believe we are living in the end times and you need newsletters censored. Newsletters censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, Get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay. We're back. We're back from lunch. I hope you learned something with uh, How to Defeat a Conservative Bible Verses by simply hitting the, the pause button, reading and learning. Oops. Yeah. Well, this should help. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It don't want to work. Uh-oh, not. Why not? Scales above. It's Beelzebub trying to mess with, trying to mess with us. Look at this. Hey, Beelzebub. That ain't very nice. Why are this still working? Look, it does. It it doesn't even want to. I'll be dead. Look at this. It won't even. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You seriously gotta be kidding me. You can't even close. It won't what? E it won't even close. What the hell's... What in tarnation? Frozen? Closing, frozen, whatever you want to call it. It's froze. Try restarting it. Yeah, but it's wasting more time. Yes, it is, but... Or bring up, uh, bring up, uh, you know, the order of law. Well, you know, remember I told you, some shit is, there's always some shit happening? Well, this is, this is unexpected perils. Control, alt, delete. More bring, time wasted. Bring up, there you go, now. Task manager. That's who I'm looking for. Yeah. You son of a bitch. Oh. All right. There we go. It was frozen. That never there happened before. Go. Nope. More time wasted. All right. Oh. I was going to say, for those of you that are taking Lasix um, prescription water pills, um, the, sa the safest natural water pill is the amino acid taurine and uh, mega B6 what is it uh, one to two grams of taurine and uh, what is a hundred milligrams of uh, vitamin B6 well, or, or higher I used to have it a hundred and then 500 not at the same time no no okay. no but uh, yeah you got to take enough of course doctor the late great dr. Robert C Atkins uh, who probably learned it from Carlton Fredericks um, which was his mentor, um, he used to recommend it to uh, uh, pre-contest professional bodybuilders, and they, it, it works. Um, just like probiotics are extremely important for the immune system and for overall health uh, in many ways, and there's, there's new articles that have been out uh, on uh, the... Uh, the benefits of, of probiotics. If you eat a lot of uh, fermented foods that will supply 
probiotics, mm -hmm. uh, kefir, um, sauerkraut, yogurt, yes, yeah, sauerkraut would be mm -hmm. an example, um, um, fermented uh, uh, bean paste, in Asian cooking. Um, tempeh. I don't know. I think the fermented bean paste has more probiotics. Tempeh is like tofu, except they use, uh, in Indonesia, they, they use the entire whole soybean and it's fermented into a cake by the same mold that causes bread to become uh, moldy. Yeah. You know, isn't that how penicillin was penicillin. discovered? Penicillin. Was that Louis, yep. Louis Pasteur? I think that was uh, Lister. Oh, there was another... Uh, Lister. Lister. I believe, yeah, it was Lister. Yeah. Well, mold, which happens to be a terrible al allergen if it's the wrong mold. Ugh. Mold is a fungi. Or yeast is a fungi, as in brewer's yeast. You know. It's, um, uh, now, if people are people are not aware that a, that a fungi is neither uh, all plant or uh. all animal. It's actually um, a bit of both. Uh -huh. It's like a hybrid between a plant and an animal. Uh -huh. So it's something, you know, uh, a little tidbit. We give you educational tidbits here on uh, progressive discussions. They're kind of scattered about. But, uh, huh. yeah, I couldn't get over that. United States Postal Service puts a big s sticker that says fragile, and they, and they deliver my, uh, my items totally shattered after making me pay top dollar for shipping. And I, I, I think, I don't know. I don't know if I should blame privatization, which never really works. You know, it, it, of course it works for Republicans because they get paid off to privatize everything. Or people who just don't care how they handle the packages. Yeah, incompetence, Yeah, which is very common. Hey, you call customer service nowadays, uh, you're lucky to get a human being. And when you do get a human being, it's an outsourced call center. Yep. You know? Anyway, let's... Trump... Continue. wants the Justice Department and FBI to investigate Hillary Clinton's campaign. Of course. In response to an excerpt from a forthcoming book by former acting Democratic National Committee Chair Donna Brazil. Donna Bobo Brazil. That says the Clinton campaign was improperly running the party during the 2016 primary. Oh, without a doubt. I, I mean, I, I believe uh, Donna Brazil. Uh, I think Donna Brazil wrote the book because uh, you think it might have something to do with Hillary Clinton calling her names. Uh, she well, got pissed at her at one point in time in 2016. I don't know about that, she but insulted. I do know that, uh, that I mean, she really Hillary did actually lent or gave money to the DNC, who was on their back at that time. Yeah. Soul control? Yes. Maybe George Soros was perhaps uh, behind the whole thing, you know. Uh, who knows? Uh, who, but knows? who knows? The fact of the matter is, Bernie got cheated. Oh, without a doubt. Okay. Oh, without a doubt, the the the, the uh, uh, Democratic primary was stolen from Bernie Sanders. Yeah. I mean, just look at the legions that showed up at Bernie Sanders rallies right. compared to who showed up at Hillary Clinton's rallies. Only gay people showed up at Hillary Clinton's rallies. In a series of morning tweets. Maybe that's why gays like uh, Cher, because of Chaz Bono. Trump seized on Brazil's article that said the DNC became financially dependent on Clinton during the 2016 primary to the detriment of the challenger, Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But no, but she really did verbally put down severely by Donna Bobo Brazil in, in, using language. I mean, that, that maybe that was when she goes, when she jumps ship, you know. 
Well, remember, Schultz had to be fired so Brazil could take over. Oh, yeah, Wasserman, Wasserman. started, she started the whole yeah. uh, crooked uh, DNC thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody is asking why the Justice Department <clears throat> and FBI is not looking into all of the dishonesty going on with crooked Hillary and the Dems. Trump tweeted. Well, nobody's be nobody has been brought to justice <laughs> that happens to be rich and higher up. <laughs> the fat cats. Nobody, nobody on top has been brought to justice. At some point, the Justice Department and the FBI must do what is right, right and proper. Yeah, because nobody should be above the law. The American public deserves it. I don't think. I think the last one who was who was brought to justice was Tricky Dick, right? When he uh, he resigned, he was forced to resign. Richard Nixon uh, as president of the United States. I think that's the last time. Has anyone else really been brought to justice? That's on the high uh, on the high end of the spectrum here. <clears throat> Trump's call I don't, I don't think so. for the Justice Department to investigate his former election rival violates a long-standing U.S. tradition of law enforcement agencies' independence from interference by the executive branch. There also appears to be little basis for an investigation. Mm. While Brazil's accusations fuel a narrative that Clinton sought to elbow Sanders out of the nomination, the fundraising agreement is not illegal. An excerpt of Brazil's book was published in Politico. In it, Brazil says that before Clinton became the 2016 Democratic political presidential nominee, her campaign signed a joint fundraising agreement with the, De the, De the Democratic National uh, Committee. Yeah, committee. In which her campaign would finance the DNC in exchange for oversight from the Clinton campaign. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh boy. What does Jesse Ventura say? Just follow the money trail? That's it. It had become dependent on her campaign for survival, for which she expected to wield control of its operations, Brazil wrote. DNC communications director, Hoshit. Ojita Hinojosa said in a statement that. Just say shit for short. I call him shit for short. He said that there were fundraising agreements with both campaigns. <laughs> the DNC must remain neutral in the primary process. And there should not be even a perception. Oh, man that the DNC is interfering in that process. Joint fundraising committees were created between the DNC and both Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders to raise the general election funds needed to win in 2016. Clinton was the only candidate who raised money for the party through her joint fundraising committee with the DNC which would benefit any candidate coming out of the presidential primary process. Trump has been pushing investigations of the Clintons since the campaign. Yet, after winning the presidency, Trump backed off for a little while. Trump's Twitter account disappeared, um, disappeared for just 11 minutes this week. 
Oh, but it's back. Of course, he loves Twitter. Far shorter than past out outages that have affected users of the social media service. Isn't that strange? But, as Trump's critics cheered his brief moment of forced silence, forced silence, <laughs> and Twitter struggled to explain who was responsible for deactivating his account. Oh boy! Oh really? The outage underscored how important Twitter has been to his presidency. Well, I'm sure Donald Trump will tweet about him losing 11 minutes. Yeah. He was probably on there for 20 minutes wondering what the hell was going on. No, he'll, believe me, you'll, you'll hear from Donald Trump. I mean, uh, he lost 11 minutes of uh, tweeting. Um. <laughs> My Twitter account has been taken down for 11 minutes by a rogue employee. I told you. I told you. A rogue employee. Trump uh, wrote. Conspiring against him. <laughs> yes. I guess the word must finally be getting out and having an impact. Oh, man. Twitter blamed a customer support worker. Oh, really? On his or her last day on the job for deactivating Trump's account on the way out. Trump, uh, Trump should have the boys uh, visit her. The San Francisco-based company added Friday that it is still investigating. They're all in California. Google, or Facebook, they're all out there. And has implemented safeguards to prevent this from happening again. Oh, boy, oh, boy. The New York Times reported on Friday, citing two unnamed sources that it was an outside contractor, not a Twitter staff member, who made the account go dark. Well, whoever it is, she get punched in the face uh, a dozen times. You know, like the, the hecklers at, at Trump's uh, political rally. Punch him in the face! Get him out of here! Get him out of here! Twitter... Punch him, the, punch him in the face! Twitter would not say if it was a contractor, and declined further explanation. Ah, you see, they're 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 dodging it, they're raising dodging. questions not only about its own security measures, but on Trump's heavy reliance on a single platform to broadcast his views. It's not surprising that even the brief shutdown of the president's Twitter account has provoked debate," said Jamil. Jaffer, yeah. executive director of Columbia University's Knight First Amendment Institute, which has filed a federal lawsuit challenging Trump's practice of blocking Twitter users who criticize him. Well, that's that's part of fascism, isn't it? Well, yeah, he, uh, he wants to hear what he says, but he don't want to hear what anybody else says. Yeah, if you if you criticize him, you're part of fake news. Yeah, well, there you go. If you compliment him, he likes you. Yeah. You know, it's like any other dictator, when you think about it. Um, you know, but don't, for, don't forget now, uh, 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 just because he feels that the DNC... And Hillary Clinton should be investigated for 2016. That, that doesn't mean that the Donald Trump Russia connection uh, should be should what? go to the uh, to the back burner. Oh, that should yeah. also be investigated. I don't think anyone should be above the law. Of course, we're we're not above the law. They would lock us up and throw away the key. Absolutely, unless you're part of the top two percent. Are you elitist? That's it. You know. You see, nobody from Wall Street ever went to jail. Except a little guy. Oh, yeah, the Goldman Sachs and, uh, uh, was, was the Bear Stern Company part of Wall Street? Bear Stern, remember them? 
All the Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs. Uh, the war. No, nobody JP saw. JP Morgan, Wells Fargo. All well, of them. Bernard Madoff, uh, uh, who made off with uh, <laughs> a lot of people's money, yeah. he only saw the inside of a jail cell because he ripped off the top two percent. They were a part of uh, his victimization. Yeah. That's why he saw a jail. Of course, if you ri if you rip off the little guy, you never see jail. You know. So <clears throat> your password can ruin your life. Uh, well, it's good to don't don't ever choose your birth date as a password. By the way, <laughs> I know that sounds dramatic, but it's true. If someone figures out the password to your email, you are in trouble. Social media, even worse. Once hackers access your online bank account, they can wreck your finances. And you may feel the repercussions of that break-in for years. This is why my sister refuses to do online banking and pay her bills online. She does not trust their wonderful, as they tell, as they will tell you, encryption system to protect you. She will not do online banking. I don't blame her. Uh, I was my Facebook account was hacked into. <clears throat> Facebook told me uh, only two things: it was someone from this Middle Eastern country using a Samsung Galaxy uh, smartphone. And that's all they really knew. Uh, but I had to change my password, which was so annoying, because it took at least a week for Facebook to accept. You no. got to go through a whole process of protecting your password from future hacks. You have to go through a whole process. It was annoying. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not like, uh, I'm not a celebrity. Uh, I don't have anything that really that a hacker would want. Um, uh, we have the great progressive discussions Facebook page, which you don't have to be a hacker to to to, to, to look at. Uh, we have some great groups, which you don't have to be a hacker to to look at either. So, beats the shit out of me. Most of us have the wrong idea about passwords. We think they have to be convoluted messes. No, you'll never remember them if like that's the case. F dollar sign, uh, 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 what you call it? Uh, percent sign. Ampersand. Ampersand. Fifty one two K. Which is a funny uh, name. Ampersand. Exclamation. Uh, ampersand. Funny name. Hey, you know what? They say hashtag all the time. I'm still I'm still unaware of why Twitter says put a hashtag in front of things. As far as I'm concerned, it, back in the old days, that's a tic-tac-toe symbol. <laughs> the only hash that I'm concerned with is corned beef hash. Got that? Hashtag. What is it? What does it do when you put the tic-tac-toe symbol in front of a, a, a statement, a Twitter statement? Uh, it gets online, and it goes to Twitter. But doesn't it normally? Uh, every, it yes, it does. If I tweeted something, let's say you tweeted uh, ins, instigate. Just and the tweet, word instigate. Right, and you put it online. Or I'm here to instigate. Ain't nothing going to happen. But I see it on my my Twitter account. It appears. When you're writing something. Like if I tweet, if I tweet something. Yeah, but the hashtag brings you to the thing or the person that you want to comment to. Uh, oh, I get it. In other words, if you have a message to go on someone else's profile or channel, hashtag. It's, it's like the uh, at on Facebook. You put the at symbol if yeah. you want to get the attention of the person, but I have also not used the at symbol. I just put the person's name that, you know, it automatically highlights. If they're on your friends list, it highlights. Well, the at signal ad puts you toward to your ISP. It points you to 
Earthlink in my case. My ba 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 at Earthlink.net. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm just talking about about statements on social media. Uh, like uh, they'll, a lot of people will use hashtag on Twitter. They'll say hashtag. Uh, uh, so so. Uh, Donald Trump is uh, has not kept any of his campaign promises yet. Hashtag, and that supposedly does something. It supposedly. But if you just put, you know, uh, if you go on Trump's page, which is called Real Donald Trump, something like that, uh -huh. it works anyway. Because I've seen people not use the hashtag. You know, it's like, well, I don't know. Well, if you're it, on his page and you're making a statement on his page, I guess you don't need it. If you're on his page. You're already directed to there. Oh, in other words, if you do it on it's your like going to a website. If you do it on your page, the hashtag maybe the hashtag sends you sends your page. comment to his page. Right. You know what? When when in doubt, Google it. Okay. This theory reigned for years that passwords which should be nonsensical and hard to remember. It started in twenty three with guidelines from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which insisted on random combinations of numbers and letters and symbols. Which are easy to forget. The organization's manager, Bill Burr, <laughs> Bill Burr. Like spread what? this gospel for years. But in a recent interview with the Wall Street Journal, he admitted that this wasn't nearly as effective as he had thought. Thanks to a new round of research, cybersecurity experts have changed their tune. Yes, you should still avoid guessable passwords like password one or your, let me in. Or your birth date, which means. But a strong password also can be logical, fluid, easy to remember. Yeah, I, I cannot overemphasize those words, easy to remember. <laughs> Passwords should withstand 100 guesses. This is the most important part. Jeez, 100 guesses. No matter what your password is, it should withstand 100 guesses. Yikes. Which means it shouldn't be tied to any public information about you or your family. Hackers often turn to their social media profiles to find information about you. And a little data goes a long way. Such as your birthday, name of your pet. Experts believe that criminals can guess the average person's password in 73% of the time. Did you know that Facebook constantly asks me for personal everyday uh, run-of-the-mill information every time I log in. They ask you for your cell phone? They want to know my hobbies, my interests, my this, my cell phone number, my uh -huh. beep, this and that, blah, 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 blah. And they, they always push the all-new Facebook Messenger app, which supposedly can spy on everything you do. <laughs> Don't forget that. And they can often access your accounts by using slight variations on the same password. Use a phrase. Instead of thinking of, of your password as a secret code, think of it as a passphrase. These are strings of words that are easy to memorize but hard for anyone else to crack. Suppose you wanted to be an astronaut. And your favorite color is fuchsia. You have never mentioned these facts online, and only your mommy knows such trivia about you. You could compose a passphrase like, I like fuchsia astronauts. Yeah, and you're not gay. You'll never forget it. And the passphrase 
who confound hackers for centuries. My God, you should have, you should have seen all the security questions I had to ask for my new iPhone. That's Steve, what's his name, Steve Wozniak of Apple? He's anal about security. Big time. Go long. You might want to sit down for this one. The new NIST guidelines suggest allowing users to create passwords up to 64 characters long. Uh, I have an itch in the middle of my forehead. What do you, you got to be a freaking uh, Watson computer to memorize that? As if that isn't a weird, weird enough, the guidelines also allow spaces between the words. I think the spaces between their ears. While many people just try to meet the bare minimum requirement of using eight characters, you will get a much stronger password by stretching things out. You could theoretically create a complex list or sentence, which still makes perfect sense to you. You could list all your pets' names from. Ch you can't see that uh, light from the front. Go ahead, finish up. I'm pissed. I'm pissed that it's, sh it's shutting down prematurely. Uh, if you created a strong password, then don't worry about changing it all the time. Stick with it unless you've been notified of a security breach. Choose something memorable. Remember, each password should be unique, but they don't have to be cumbersome. The NIST calls passwords Memorize Secrets. You want to avoid the temptation to write down passwords. Mm. So pick a password that has enough meaning to you to stay in your mind. Well, not the one that's like, uh, what is it, a hundred characters long? The one that you read? <laughs> <laughs> get creative! Oh, that's when you're going to forget your password, when you get creative. It may take websites some time to catch up to the latest guidelines, but you can still create a memorable password that meets current restrictions. Go back to Burr's advice on passphrases. You might choose something like Arizona Cardinals football is number one. That's a long password. Or I give my job 1,000% every day. 1,000%. <laughs> Those meet the requirements of having at least eight characters, a special character, and upper and lower case letters. Use two-factor identification. Oh, upper and lower case. That's when you really forget your password. <laughs> oh. While passwords help protect you or information, hackers are more sophisticated than ever. If they break into your accounts, you may not recognize the damage until it's too late. Months passed before the public learned about the Equifax breach, and it's hard to assess how much information has been leaked or how it will be used. That is why two-factor identification is so important. Using text messages, emails, or special apps an account holder will receive a notification every time a password is changed or entered on a new device or at a new location. You will have to verify that it is you attempting to gain access. Yeah, you get an email. Stating, was that really you that logged in to Facebook or whatever? Yeah. Is that really you? Well, I apologize if any parts of the reading <clears throat> were cut out of the show. Uh, we, <clears throat> we're experiencing some technical difficulties. 
That really pissed me off. Um, all I have to say is uh, when you are given something as a gift, and this is, this is words of wisdom, when you're given something for free as a gift, it, it, there is always a reason, unless it's brand new, if it's not brand new, if you are given something as a gift, it is because the person that is giving it does not want it for some reason. Always be aware of that. Yeah. And you know what? As far as looking a gift horse in the mouth, <clears throat> I'd rather pay more money and get a brand new gift horse to myself and not have issues. <clears throat> That, that is, those are the words of wisdom I will leave you with. So therefore, thank you for joining us for this week's Progressive Discussions. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 and the, <coughs> Reverend, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey saying so long. So long. And, uh, and I still think Google is trying to <clears throat> censor us, just like they, just like social media is constantly trying to censor uh, our progressive talk show host Evelyn Pringle. Uh -huh. They're really messing with her on Facebook, that's for sure. Every anybody who's a progressive warrior gets fucked with because the companies that offer the free social media. Okay, that by the way, bombard you, you know, put advertisements galore on whatever you, you upload. Okay, these are corporations. These are evil corporations, wicked corporations run by evil, wicked corporate American CEOs. Who are uh, tools of Satan, in my opinion, in the end times? Isn't that right? Dr. Billy Bones, our official skeleton of end time prophecy. All right. <laughs> Billy Bones was dancing. That means Billy Bones agrees. We'll see. It. And I'm, I'm telling the truth about freaking getting something that ain't brand new and somebody fucking gives you something. <laughs> Motherfuckers. I can't stand humanity. I hate their, oh. I hate their stinking guts.